She's a length and a half in front of Alligator Blood, but she's fighting Pride of Jenny. She's still clear from Alligator Blood and Mr. Brightside. Pride of Jenny, this has been spectacular, and Pride of Jenny won again. Welcome to Bet Doctor Behind the Curtain. Look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot. Up and about, big weekend of racing coming up. We've got the Hunter and the uh, Rupert Clark. It's going to be a beauty of a weekend. Walt, how are you, brother? Huh? <laughs> still here, still, still breathing. The Hunter. The Hunter. Yeah, it's the, it's the entree before the gong. The Rupert Clark. Oh, at least a yeah. thousand guineas. There's flung a Great. couple of good horses. Great that's race. that's beautiful. That there was a couple of horses that weren't cooked by the end of the spring that are in that race. That's, well, let's I'll champion it. Yeah, I reckon there's a lot of uh, there's yeah there's there's a lot of good horses running around, and I see old mate Curls said that uh, the common man wouldn't be able to name a runner. I reckon it's quite the opposite. I reckon there's pretty uh, deep fields there at Caulfield, and uh, lots of horses sort of are jumping off the page. DK, how are you, mate? Big uh, congrats first, mate. Your super coach. Super coach, yeah, yeah. Buttering up, buttering up again. Scoot uh, got the gig <laughs> for the uh, Avondale Heights under 12s. So I'll tell you what, I did the interview. I thought I was off. I thought I was off. They said, oh, there's another candidate and uh, well, oh, how, how will you handle it if you don't get the job? You're still supporting it. So I thought, jeez, oh, I'm, I'm off here. But uh, no, they saw sense. And uh, so, yeah, cashing in, mate. So um, that only took me only took me 30 years to work out. There's life outside of racing. So um, oh. no, it's, been real, it's been really good for uh, for me, for the coach and the kids. What is it, 20, 50 grand a year to get to uh, for no, that gig or what? Fully, fully voluntary, mate, at that level. But uh no, absolutely voluntary, but giving back, mate, giving back to the community. So um, Half a million if you get the premiership from Aussie or something, <laughs> surely. That's, that's, that's the motivation. It's get, brown uh, paper bag land out there. That's, that's no, all they do. A, they just give the cashies everywhere. Good man, mate. You see the signings. I mean, so Mar- Marby Park just signed Lockie Plowman, you know, um, wow. straight out of the AFL. What, what, what would he be getting, Lockie Plowman? Marby Park, the, the signings everywhere. I just they're popping up every day. It's, all right. it's good big money in the, um, in the suburban footy. Don't worry about that. Well, that wouldn't be a lunch bag. That'd be one of those twenty-five cent jobby bags from Safeway. That the brown bag would have to be that big to play, pay those sort of uh, blokes. But uh, it's pretty exciting. I think uh, the carnivals, uh, it's kicked a bit. I, I'd rather bet this weekend than uh, the Sandown meetings of old. I think it's uh, it's good. I'm I'm, I'm happy. I'm I'm yeah, ready. Yeah, to go. I'm, I'm hungry. I mean, I was cooked after a couple of weeks. I don't know about you, and probably looking at Wild he was too. It's a big week. You take a breather and then, okay, here we go again. But uh, mainly, you're right. They're seeing Skybird and Kuwa on in the thousand guineas. That's um, that was that's you know that's exciting. But uh, I didn't ever know there was a. I just I look at the New South Wales race. Oh, there's a million dollar race on. Is there? Of course there is. You know, <laughs> here it is, the hunter. Why wouldn't there be? So. Mm. It's only it's just anyway. the prize money's only just over the maiden and Wednesday. That was <laughs> five runners. So uh, you know, <laughs> what can you do? Tell you what, uh, Nico, happy to get out of uh, Flemington alive. Uh, wind, uh, some sort of track bias over watering. Had a bit of it all, but uh, I think the bookie's got the chocolates over the four-day carnival. But uh, beware the wounded punter. We'll bounce back, Nico. Yeah, it was a big week, wasn't it? Um, still recovering, to be honest. I don't know if I bounced through it like DK, but uh, yeah, we're into Saturday and uh, it looks a pretty good meeting. And we also got a good meeting from Launceston on Friday night as well, which I'm keen to have a few bets on. So uh Hopefully a few winners for the punters at home. Get back to the low-hanging fruit. Nico, uh, the Movember uh, Tash looks outstanding, so make sure uh, you head to Nico's uh, Twitter account if you want to well, donate for Movember. I don't know if it's the greatest oh. Movember effort yet. I think many <laughs> would have me covered, but uh, I'm giving it a crack. Tell you what, looks looks outstanding. As long as the miss is happy, that's all uh, you have I'm to worry about. From, uh, she'll, she'll, she'll get it. She'll get it. She legs. Shoot. I'm telling you. Yeah, <laughs> in a size. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Twitter, there's a uh, a pin tweet on the Bet Doctor account. I'm not. I don't really want another sermon about uh, wagering, but uh, the Daniel Lawrence story is an interesting one. It uh, it's just crazy how much unfettered power the bookie's got at the moment. Uh, he's got some money locked away in a bookie. Uh, you can pretty easy to guess who by the uh, the graphics on the uh, the screen of the uh, the tweet, and uh, they're requesting five years worth of betting shop statements. So it's just. We, you know, we talk about it a fair bit, and we've given it a fair run. But um, the PRAs need to step in because bookies up in NT, they're just going just absolutely rogue, and it's just cowboy behaviour. And there just seems to be more of these bookies pop up and then collapse, and there's just no protection for the punters. So uh, all the uh, the PRAs, or the heads of the PRAs that were sitting there at the call of the card and saw that event unfold, you guys need to pull your socks up and figure out what's going on here because uh, it's punters are just in a tailspin and there's just more punters' funds being locked up and the rules are just being skirted and, um, yeah, they're basically spitting to punters 
uh, faces at the moment, and uh, PREs are technically JV partners, so a uh, lot of uh, tidying to do, especially when you can see all the soft figures of coming out of uh, Victoria and uh, no doubt in New South Wales in a fair bit of pain as well. Let's kick on to oh, yeah, uh, the I show. Just, uh, this needs a bit scoot. Don't don't go don't go over that too quick. I thought it did need. I mean, well, I know you don't want to go on about it, but it was a new low. I mean, to demand five. Statements, activity statements from five other bookies to show this bookie as part of a safer gambling review of a winning punter mm. that they will never ever do to a losing punter. I mean, it was just, it, I, I could, I just looking through it, oh yeah, it's the same again. And then it, it was an absolute new low. And that's what I think that comes from, you know, this, it's a, part of those affordability checks stuff that they're doing in the UK. It seems to have come from that. But I thought it was, um, I mean, they, they've got MBLs, they've got, uh, race fields and a bit of compliance, but apart from that, they write their own terms and conditions. But to, to to say, give us a look at all your other bookie statements. I mean, try it was just it was an absolute absolute. You're like when you thought they couldn't go any lower, there it was. I'm still yet to be paid from the tab from about 18 months ago. A $200 bet, five thousand collect uh, because they asked of all of that of Beck on a cash ticket. Hmm, it's crazy. A cash ticket that you went to collect, they refused to pay. I, heard, I spoke to another guy at the Betfair function on, a, uh, on the Sunday and he's got 17000 locked in at one of these pop-up uh, bookies as well and they just won't hand over the money. He's since both busted up with his missus and the accounts in his uh, partner's name. Um, and it's another, it's another massive problem. So, yeah, it's uh, just it's, it's it just seems to be more and more happening, and it's um yeah it's another utter disgrace. I can't it, really it, say much more. What's the problem more, with but, the um, one apparently going under the under the under the water on the weekend or something, wasn't there, or something like that? I mean, well, they, that's what they book, put then, four into one and then sunk the one. But then there's bookies, what, bookies, what the bookies guarantee funds for. These people put up guarantees just to guarantee all the funds that are in the account. So. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, it's something, something's going to have to give, I tell you. You'd like to think when they put four into one, someone knew what was going on. They might have given people a heads up. Pretty average behaviour. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, the state PROs need to uh, pull their socks up because uh, it's uh, the Wild West. And I think uh, Marco um, on uh, Twitter was an absolute belter. We keep hearing about uh, how offshore is dangerous. The worst op- <laughs> operators at the moment, they're on our shores. They're the, uh, the smaller pop-up bookies in Australia. So... Yeah, it's a uh, it's a big concern. So a lot of work to be done then, and, and having said we get that, some... the one that asked the five user statements was one of the big six. So you know, um, it's not they they they're, 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 they're cowboys out wide, but it, it can look like it's leaching into the others as well. Yeah, they're doing a couple of things that mob and uh, yeah, oh, well, they were the ones who sort of started it, the yeah. big guys, because then as soon as the big guys seem to be getting away with it, the little guys start to open it's up and follow. use the same tactics. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, a lot of work to do in that space. Uh, Donnie's back. He's had a couple of bets uh, back at Grafton, so he's bounced through the carnival uh, okay. Shangri-La Express, Walt, good winner last week. Uh, 1,200 metres, what do you think? Slipper, worthy favourite this this yeah. at this time? Yeah, it's one of the better two-year-olds. I think that, yeah, it's like far and away the best two-year-old we've seen. I don't 1,200 is certainly no issue, but, um, you know, you're not going to be able to ride it in the fashion it's been ridden its first two starts and expect it to win a big race, you mm. wouldn't think. It probably needs a little bit more finesse, but it's, um, yeah, it's well far and dry. I think there's, there's been some nice trialers, especially from that camp. They seem to have half a dozen nice two-year-olds, which they're always good at churning them out, the Waterhouse stable, and they look to hold all the trump cards at the moment, like I heard so yesterday, that uh, thing that won the first at Rose Hill yesterday straight away there, Magic Millions winner. I'm like, what? <laughs> I know they're not going there with Shangri-La Express, but he, he bashed that horse's head in. Mm. He is a bit hot though. Would you take him to the Gold Coast? Be human. No, he's not. He's gone away. He's going to. He's going to just slip uh, only. Getting put away, which is uh, I think smart. You know, obviously, what that race is worth a million or whatever, so he's got no problem getting in every race now, and and they can target him. Outstanding. Nico's got uh, Caulfield and Launceston to preview, as is in the paddock. Uh, he's a bit snowed in with uh, work commitments at the moment, but uh, you got Von Hawk last uh, Saturday and then poor old Antino sort of pulled up a little bit lame. A fair bit of commentary around uh, Antino. Is he excuses or is he a bit of a flea or anyone got an opinion? He looked terrible behind the gates. I like, obviously didn't see too much of him, like he, but he blew heavily from the parade from like 220 to three blokes up uh, – Sorry, plus three dollars plus, and he looked like sour. He didn't jump. He never travelled. Mm. He, yeah, it, it, I don't know what the story was there, but he probably shouldn't have gone around. Mm, Nico probably forecasted it. He said that the horse might be uh, over the top, and 
He certainly uh, raced like it. Uh, I got Jamie Spencer on West Wind Blow, so I've caught my full full whack there. I should have known better, and in hindsight, it's probably never going to beat uh, the winner there, a tissue. But I think uh, there might be a bit of a petition we could start. We might just ban Frankie and Jamie Spencer from entering Australia. I think we'll just get, sure, get rid sure of both of them. Close. These guys have got to work it out. How many times? Like even you bring Ryan Moore. Not that you know, I'm saying he did anything wrong on Vaughan or whatever. But like, what's the What's, they don't ride these tracks all the time. I know talking to Timmy every year, it takes him a, a couple of weeks to get used to the dimensions of Flemington mm. and how big it is and where you are all the time. It's not easy. So, you know, flying these guys in, even if they're the best in the world, I don't know how how long it can last. We pull that Jerry, poor old, was he um, Hideki Matsuyama? Like, he just was completely cast. <laughs> he didn't know where he was the no. whole way. Like, I just, he gave that awesome barrier troll in the, in the Melbourne Cup. So, you know. I and even that was that even that was even Ollie Ollie's point about when I heard him his commentary on this the Sulcum ride. He wasn't critical, but he just says, you know, you're flying a bloke for one ride in a race like that, and don't choose a local who knows ins and outs and been riding here all the time, and that's what you get. Get you know making wrong decisions and things like that in the critical times, which are split second decisions. Especially so, like in second nature where you are in the in the race for them, and then they can make decisions, whereas they're trying to work out where they are and make a decision. Mm. Exactly. It's it's nearly impossible. Mm. He did he did fine without a fire. I, I went back and had a look at that like super closely over the last few days, and he did fine without a fight's back throughout the majority of the run. So uh, I, It was, yeah. As if it a, goes a bit an of inch a either way, he could have been the genius in Zara, the, the monk. The, but, um, the other horse was just travelling far far too better. So I think it's a bit of a storm in a teacup there. And It was interesting. I think uh, I saw a, a tweet from Graham Pavey who follows the um, the Japanese racing closely. He doesn't mind a tweet, the big fella. He loves a, he loves a tweet. He does, <laughs> does love a Japanese tweet. Yeah, he's a good man. He uh, he doesn't miss much over there. And he, he tweeted out some um, some stats, some jockey stats of all the big riders that you know jumped off from the, um, the Melbourne Cup Carnival and went straight straight over to Japan. I think Marrera bobbed up with four winners and old mate Ryan Moore, I think he went none none from his rides. So yeah, anyone that wants to put Moore's, Moore's a very good ride. I'd, yeah. pick, I'd have Joe over him. Mm. Have a look at what Jimmy Allman did. Just what did he park over in Dubai for a couple of weeks and rode about 15 winners. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen anything about that. That's interesting. <laughs> mate, Mick Costa. Mick really? Costa got him. Yeah. Wow. Mick I knew he was over there. I hadn't seen that he'd ridden eight winners, so that's incredible. That's five good. out of seven, one card, and then another four on the next card or something. Just killed him. Wow. Mm, dropping Interesting. Drop. Must be, oh, yeah, it's like, oh, he's a great rider, but yeah, they must be, <laughs> it must be funny racing over there. Yeah, well, he is. He's funny, but he's obviously uh, doing a uh, great job over there, Mighty Mick. Uh, so, yeah, I'll try and find a winner this week, but uh, sort of slaughter of the week for me at the moment. He-Man uh, was huge, and then West Wind Blows was an absolute stinker. Top Sport Steam, they need to get on the board. they got Bob at Top Sport for the Group 1 uh, Melbourne races, so you got the uh, the Rupert Clark and the 1,000 Guineas, so you can get odds to 5K, and if it drifts, you'll, you'll get the, uh, the cherry on top there. So make sure you check out Bob on the Vic Group 1s because I think that's... That's, uh, that's the last of it this weekend. Nico, uh, Caulfield, um, probably the uh, probably the most pertinent thing to do at the moment is uh, have you checked the wind sock for uh, Saturday? Is, is the wind going to go or is the wind going to stay? Because I think uh, it's going to be it's a, it's a sunny day at least. Yeah, I think about 20 degrees. So, um, yeah, the, the wind just played havoc. Derby day and stakes day of Cleamington. Um, Caulfield. Probably can't. Sometimes it's not as bad there, say as a, as a Flemington, given how open Flemington is. But um, yeah, it is something you're probably going to have to monitor throughout the day. I usually sort of lean on a few other people to sort of tell me um, that information because it goes over my head nine times out of ten. So um, yeah, we'll just see what happens on the day and probably adjust from the yard if we are uh, we have to do anything. Mm, looks not too bad. Only twenty five up to twenty five k, so should be uh, shouldn't be a problem there. Caulfield race three is the first one we're going to have a look at. It's the Bravo uh, Damien Oliver handicap, which is a, a bit of a giggle there, and a bit of a caveat here. Betting into these early markets, you have got Prushka with uh, Poison Chalice, the favourite four dollars twenty. No rider. It's going to Adelaide. He's, he's over in Adelaide. He's, in he's going to Adelaide this morning on the way in. It's going to Adelaide. Should be a, yeah. should be moral over there, shouldn't it? I believe. Yeah, betting <laughs> the money. Been. 
Yeah, yeah probably probably a dollar fifty chance. I would have thought. Uh, Eighteen hundred meters looks right up its alley, but um, it's four dollar twenty favorite here. So Mister Mojo Rising will come into favorite five fifty. Uh, Maricarnas in the race to Bay Shore, Angry Skies, uh, Place of Gold, Divine Purpose, Rhinoceros, Paperboy, Big Brew, and Alla Alumbra Lad, and Socrates is the outsider in the field. Nico, you're uh, you're going to follow up with uh, Mister Mojo Rising, Old Az's horse. This was a good win. Uh, I was off the map in the betting. Come home pretty good relative to the day, although he sat up on top of the speed here and it's pretty soft, really. I think Jamie kind of gets stuck into him, but I don't think she really had to. Um, it was a, in the end, he just could have won it under his own stem. I really like Poison Charles coming out. I thought that would probably happen. Um, so, yeah, I think that makes his horse's task a bit easier. And I think he might get a very similar run on Saturdays. Just be starting to begin a bit better in his races. And I think a rider like Jamie Carr. Probably really suits a horse like him. He drops in the weights, I think it's 62 back to 56, and he just gets the run of the race. And I thought, fair chance Poison Chalice does come out, or even if he was in, he's going to be spotting him a huge head start. So, um, yeah, at, probably at favour now, what, probably $4 or something like that, 380 Um, I think uh, he looks pretty pretty respectable bet at that price. I thought there wasn't too many other horses that might have the upside of him, and he, Jamie might have just found the key to the horse last start, just let him build into the race. Probably not going to have to go too quick. I think you find a very similar race shape where it's just sort of sit up a bit early and sprint late, and he's got a pretty dynamic turn of foot as we saw there. So uh, I thought, yeah, Poison Charles coming out, big positive there, and I thought there, um, it looks a pretty good race for him. Ma- uh, Marikan has come out of that uh, that Wishlaw Lass form, bit of a class drop here, and then to Bay Shore. Probably not a bad run in the Vobus Gold Star, that Umgawa form, but he would have been giving him a fair spot and a fair bit of uh, fitness. Yeah, I thought Tabay Shaw is probably one of the dangers, and Marikana looks a bit deadly, especially if they go forward on her. There's not a lot of speed in this race. I could see maybe a, a filly like or a mare like her sort of rolling the dice a bit here, given she sort of missed out in a bit of the spring um, black tie races. Maybe they look to sort of make amends in here. But just look, Mr. Mojo Rising, he should have everything go right from the draw. And if he can't beat him, well, um, it's just not much good. But I think he gets a really good opportunity to just to put one away there again on Saturday. DK, any thoughts? No, not really. No, um, no, no. I, I, I sort of saw Poison Chalice dual nommed, and uh, obviously he's a horse of interest and for me. And then heard Pushka saying this morning he's going to Adelaide to get the get its rating up, so he can actually get some points, and that's the point of it going over there. So um, no, I, uh, I'll, I'll leave that through to Nico, mate. Mm, it's a super run last start, Poison Chalice. We'll say Paris Affair, the third horse there out of Mooney Valley's in it. Is it Seymour Friday or is it in today? Packing on one of those, so um, it's it's stepping up to two thousand. So that'll, you'll sort of get a guide off it. Bit of the strength of that form as well. It had a bit of a barrier troll in that race. Ollie never got serious on it to the last hundred metres, so um, it gets out in tripping over at the provincials the next day or two. So that'll uh, it's a horse of interest for me in the in the bush. Mm, Paris affair. So uh, check yeah, that that's one. Yeah, that's the one. Follow up uh, horse there. Let's have a look at uh, race number seven, and it's thousand guineas. Curvalonte is the favourite here. Four dollars into three ninety. Skybird four dollars. Jolly Star five fifty. Arctic Glamour eight. Kamachi's in the race ten dollars. Uh, Zurion eleven. Then you got Quick Star, Karina Queen, Vivier, all around about the twenty dollar quote there, and then Vibrant Sun in the similar uh, price at twenty one thirty four dollars. Ursa and uh, Enna's Dream and Apache Songs the uh, unfancied runner there. Skybird's the horse that you like here. Nico Barrow too. Not sure if that's going to suit it. It's probably going to need a similar ride, but uh, Bo Mertens uh, rolled the dice and uh, got the split. Yeah, it's a good ride, wasn't it? Sort of staying in, but no, I really liked it that he did this for this race because he draws in again here, so she knows how to take gaps. I think she's going to have to do similar on Saturday. I don't think she'll be as far back as what she was on this occasion. I think they'll definitely use her up a bit more. They drew wide here and just went back. Um, and the horse that finished second, Grinzinger Bell, drew in sort of next to her. They had a big bump at the start, and then she went back, and Grinzinger Bell just sort of surged right forward. She was the second fastest last turn of the meeting, and I was off a very fast speed, but that's what she just does. This horse. She has a weapon turn of foot, and she's already seen a mile. So I think that gives her a big tick over a few of her rivals that haven't seen it. Um, she hasn't seen a high pressure race, but just the way she finished off there, just can't see her not running out a strong 1600 meters. and. I think from the draw, she can probably position up midfield, not back last like she has. And she just looks a bit bomb proof. Like she just looks a bit point and shoot after we saw with that replay, just took the gaps. Um, when he really let rip, she just absolutely surged the line. Her, all her closing sectionals have been absolutely massive throughout her whole career. She just might be a real talent. So um, I didn't see stacks of speed in this race um, compared to, say, the prelude where they went very fast. Uh, they just didn't seem like there was the, the same sort of tempo here, which. I think if there's not, it's maybe, you know, just even, it will really suit her. 
Um, so yeah, I thought she was, she was pretty bomb proof and yeah, I thought at sort of $4, you could mark her much shorter given she probably has to settle a bit closer from the draw. They'll use her up a bit and then she should still have a good turn of foot weight given she's already seen 1600 meters. So yeah, I thought she was pretty bomb proof here. Uh, I was probably happy to bet up at around $4. Mm, Curvalonte is a, uh, is an interesting one. Had to give him weight in the, uh, the preload. It was a pretty impressive win and, an eye catcher out of that race, I thought was uh, Vivier at a uh, at a price. Yeah, and they went quick there. So Vivier and those sort of fillies, they have a good platform for this thing. And now three weeks between runs, so um, they set up pretty well. Um, it's just sort of how much work a few of them have to do in the early stages, like Cour Um Obviously, a huge win last start, but I'm just kind of leaning on the fact that I think Skybird might be a better horse. I'd I'd be surprised if the race didn't shoot that straight. Um, I think, you know, the horses that are run well in the lead-ups are probably going to be running well again here. And you know, Vivier probably looks one at a bit of odds. But, yeah, I think um, I'd be surprised if Skyboard or Corbel aren't really fighting it out. And I think Skyboard just may be a better horse. So, leaning her away at the moment, I thought four dollars is pretty generous, to be honest. So, um, yeah, end of the carnival. We've got to keep rolling on, mouth guard in, and we're going again. I think uh, she's a pretty good bet at four dollars. DK, that was the horse that you mentioned. Skyboard, are you... Happy yeah, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. She's. Uh, it's, a, it's tricky here because I, I was on them both last start, and they're both terrific wins. And I, Corvo was the was the beneficiary of a B shin eleven out of ten, getting it in the one one from the outside barrier or something. It was, it was terrific. But um, no, Skybird. She she could be one dead set one out of the box. And uh, I think the key is is she people say oh she might be buried back inside them. She's gone back due to barriers every start. It's not because she lacks early speed. She's had to go just go back because of the she's drawn wide every start. Now she finally draws a barrier. He can mm. put her maybe three back the fence worst way. She's got a absolute weapon turn of foot. Um, you know, people say maybe the oh this place might be lacking because the best fillies aren't there. They ran in the oaks and all this. This could be the best filly in the country. You know, so um, I think they right with Nico. I sort of say oh taken on horses or back last start. It was a good win curve along. But then you go oh who's the better horse? Who do I think's the better horse going forward? And I think I side with Nico. I think definitely Skybird for me. Well, you're going to poo poo us. What are you going to do? You look no, locked no, and loaded. I, I, no, I think they're all cactus because, like, I've probably had as much turnover in the whole spring carnival as I have on this race <laughs> and the <laughs> and the and the one after it. But yeah, I can't believe they're four dollars. Take your pick and like, it, it's, yeah, like it's Skybird. Someone, anyone saying gate, gate two Skybird is is bad? I, I want to hold all their bets for the rest of their life. It's. Like as he says, exactly what DK said. Like twelve hundred jag, jag, jag. They've just looked after it. It, it can see. It, I reckon it could lead these if it wanted to. Like it's just, <laughs> it's a weapon. Um, Coervalon, absolutely ideal leader. Like he, he rode it like God, but it, he rode it forward on a fast speed. As uh, Scoot said, fifty eight kilos, it, strong as an ox. Hit the front way too early, and the, the sort of knockout strong looking horses. Vivier it drew thirteen. So good luck running these horses down from. It will be last. You'd, you'd imagine. Um, yeah, fourth run, first prep, little little That's, query, but yeah. she's had three three soft runs. It was a and, barrier trial last start. That's it. So, and 12, 13, 16 was not easy to do last start. As as uh, Nico said, like the absolutely ideal, just a sit sprint 1600 is a beautiful pipe opener to have a cherry ripe for this. If one of those two don't win, and I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, if I've had to have one, it's definitely Skybird, the same as everyone. I just, and you get like four, I don't know what price Kerr Villain will start. I, Skybird's got a firm, isn't it? Like, it's kind of weird. Like, I'd be happy to sort of have two to one the betting now, and then if Curvalont gets out, have more on his And I'll, well, it's yeah, just it's just one thing you see with the models, isn't it? You know, then they go wide barrier, wide barrier, wide barrier, and run well from back, and then it draws good barrier and it gets the big plus map. The, the, and it's the not sulking. Like it's not coming out in its head every start. That's right. <laughs> you know, so it's um, yeah. I, I don't see what they see, and I, I think it can sit outside Jolly Star. I don't think it'll like it'll just sit outside J Mac. And if they go quick early, it'll be fifth, sixth. If they go slow, it'll you know probably be third, fourth. I don't, I don't. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I don't. I, it's, a, it's probably one of the best races of the carnival, just because these two horses look proper horses going to the autumn. I don't know what Gary Portelli's doing with Kamochi, and he's got oh, the he's other one in as well, it. isn't he? Is it, there's, he's, you've got the other one in he's somewhere. Trying to kill it. There's, uh, oh, anyway, whatever. <laughs> he's trying to. He's just trying to kill the horse. Mm. Is is there? Uh, I've done. Is there a good bow and a bad bow? Just trying to look for a reason. I don't think it matters. Not at the moment. He ran third in the Melbourne Cup. He's up and about. It's flying, Gary Harley can ride this horse. Mm. Like it was. Like he was the gun apprentice, and then he then he then he quietened right off when he came into his 
into his senior time. But to his credit, he's just grinded away right in the bush, and now he's getting the opportunities, getting on some nice talent, doing the job. So no, no, he can, he can, he's got, the, he's got, he's got as much talent as most of the riders in Victoria. Raw talent, you know, he's a good okay. rider. When you got confidence in a horse, yep. And you're, he did. you're right. Like, look at Sam Clipper and the way he rides. Think about it. Yeah, true. It takes riders to another level. Good horses. I don't think he'll panic on this horse because he just knows that she can get him out of trouble. All right, beautiful. Mouth guard in, and we just press. I love this. Oh, I am one thousand <laughs> percent going to work with DK as a shoe shiner with multi super multi man. Um, if this if, if this race goes pear shaped, you moving to Forbes or Parks or Dubbo? I'm moving to Orange. Isn't that hey? where he's going? I don't know. I'll be his, I'll be his apprentice. Hey. Uh, Forbes Park. Hopefully it goes better Parks than Osmo's. Well, that was a brutal last furlong, Osmo's. I tell you, that was brutal. Yeah, it's just that, 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 that it's just not having that two thousand meter run. That's what setups all about, isn't it? The winner yeah. are just just too I tough. I was going to run past it though. when it didn't put half a length on it straight away. I knew we were in trouble, but then it was even sicker with Amakura sort of getting held up in behind no. and then st- it was just the <laughs> ultimate pain job that race, wasn't it? No. <laughs> uh, anyway, full credit to the winner. Christ, it's had some hard racing and What about them all? It. They've, they've rewritten, haven't they rewritten the um, the form book or my the psyche about coming out of brutal races, you need three weeks and all this, bro, all this stuff. Mm. You know, they back it up. These things are backing up out of brutal races and and. Running peaks and winning. Second, second group. What is it? Like the first horse to win two group ones in the carnival since Rogan Josh. Like it's, you think it's a big effort, isn't it, from a horse that has her racing style? And like I, I was watching the acceptance. She was in and out of the acceptances five ten minutes before they were come out. So they were they were fifty fifty where they were going to run her. I would imagine. And she's uh, all honest to pride of Jenny. Mm. The other one was uh, Apulia. It, it's gone. Well, it, it ran in the Rift Rocket race at Caulfield and then it went to the Vars. Yeah, right. And then it was absolute, looking at the tapes, I think it was something beat in the uh, derby. But that horse is tough as teak, whereas the horse I fell into, Air Assault, it was it was looking for a stretcher at the, the 400 metre mark and it, it it might be dead, that horse. But Apulia is it, some yeah. animal. Might have, yeah, the, the Moody Valley run might have popped, it. Pot, popped. This uh, other Air horse. Assault. He's definitely the, the stayer of the spring. Tough. Um, yeah, Zardozzi was like, she's the first Oaks winner for ages where you're like, far out, can't wait to see what she does in the Caulfield Cup. You know, it used to always be the Oaks winner was uh, the horse you were, she, they'd always nearly be favourite for the Caulfield Cup mm. straight off the race. She's the first one who looks like she fits that mould for a while. But, um, yeah, he looks like he's going to be a, a decent stayer of Apulia. We'll see what happens. But, yeah, Nico was on him pretty early as well. Uh, Nico, your uh, telegram, 25 bucks a week, so uh, I don't think he's going to knock off for uh, quite some time. So uh, he's going to have to suck it up and just keep bashing and punting his way through uh, until Christmas. So Just uh, just, back, just back his old man's horses. That'll be the go, won't yeah. it, Nico? Oh. Hey, is there any more informed stable and jewel <laughs> racing, whatever it is, Big Dave? Yeah, we had a good week. Um, see, if I'm better Swiss, I had a one last Sunday, we'd have got right off. But, uh, yeah, Lot of Rock was a good win. Uh that, that's actually my first win as an owner at a Chuka. Oh, so, was it really? Hey, yeah, so it was go, good fun. And go. I actually twisted Dad's over to buy the horse, actually. So, um, yeah, it was a good, good result. I think we bought him for three or three and a half, and now he's on 20. So, beautiful. Happy off days. to a Donga next Friday and hopefully another W. Beautiful. He, the, the old Rupert, I am absolutely balls deep magic time there and uh, smaller on Chain of Lightning. Am I missing anything? There, and I, that, this is before it drew fifteen. I'm, it's going to need a little bit of luck <laughs> to get across. Now, I, I agree, but I don't think it needs a lot. To be fair, but it's a good place. Am I to missing be. anything? Balls deep. I think she's the she's definitely uh, the one that I wanted to be on. Nico. Yeah, I thought the Rupert Clark was pretty tricky. So, um, I sort of thought those horses coming out of Flemington race. What was it? The Rising Fast, or the, maybe it was the Damien Oliver? I can't remember. But um, Anton and Bolana did look like they had good setups, and then sort of straight ace. It looks like a bit of a good hope at around nine dollars and. Yeah, Magic Time. If she had a Drew better, it'd probably be like a little bit keener, but it's just how it's not never like they go slow on a Rupert Clark. That's probably a knock. Here. It's probably going to be a fast run fourteen hundred. Well, as a, just listen to G Beck this morning, it sounds like it's just going to be Rosary Bead's job. Hope it's slow. Hopefully they break up, and hopefully it slots in somewhere. I reckon you know, it so. will. I reckon yeah, that, yeah, that's what they've got to aim for. Like obviously there is guesswork, but they look like they're going to go fast enough. Well, they they run and they run and like the like the last mile group one at Flem- at Caulfield the. The tour rack, that'd be sweet, won't it? Yeah. Land in the right spot. You'd hope exactly. Buffalo River just really rolls along with a real fast tempo and then the rest can sort of slot in, which probably will happen. So it'll be mm. quick. It's just a matter of what run she gets. Mm. Yeah, in 53. 53 is great. Looks like IME's going to roll down there. I see it's in the Cranbourne stable, so mm. it looks like it's going to head that way. 
straight ace, I think he's a 1,000% complete rosary B job. Like, I think this is just a complete shot at the title. Like, Just trying to kill it? Yeah, 90% chance it was going to be in the paddock after the last run and they've just kids come up so weak. Yeah, it's a good race. And Chain of Lightning looks like he's just desperate for 1,400. Before DK says it, Scoot's quality numbers, you can't leave out Ayrton, Munamek, Chain of Lightning. Uh, Crosshaven was Munamek. a, bit of a bit of a run as well. Munamek. Huh? Maybe Munamek like versus Magic Time. about before the barrier draw was Munamek. Munamek versus Magic Time should be like first K, not first round knockout should be like $1.04. <laughs> this good quaddy numbers. <laughs> Funny things happen in racing. All right, let's have a look at uh, the big wet up at uh, Newcastle. Newcastle? How do you say it? Well, I don't even say it anymore after <laughs> they've killed this carnival. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't miss it from, I'm going to say, 10 years old to 35. Yeah, right. No, it used to be a two-day, Walt, did it? No, Wednesday, days? Thursday, the yeah, best. It used to be grouse. Like, like, used... like Bendigo Cup and but that was Wednesday, Thursday. You have 100 bookies there. Yeah, uh, so like deep. You've seen them. I put the stupid tweet out with the honour roll, like Shogun Lodge Encounter, Dracula, uh, Ebony Grove winning the Spring Stakes. Uh, I couldn't name the, the Newcastle Cup winners, but even what was the – not that long ago, Lloyd's Horse won it and came out and won the Cup. What was uh, – I can't remember. It was Green Moo. Was it Green Moo? Green Moo, yeah. Yeah, even that was a – High quality race, and now obviously this is not the Newcastle Cup. They've split carnival, it, and but they've split it. it, and they've made this the Spring Stakes. And Tim Zorse's favourite coming off a Class One at Gosford, where <laughs> Dead Set was gone at the four hundred. <laughs> yeah, it's four dollars, mate. Oh my god! Anyway, the Lord above is uh, is going to punish him because there's twenty mil likely to uh, hit before. Uh, as long the, as it doesn't rain race day, that that track races really well with a bit of a sting out. But obviously, for what we're doing, form we, we're we're aiming up for. A bit to arrive would be handy. <laughs> would be handy. Race six is the first one we're going to sink our teeth into. It's the New Zealand Bloodstock, the Beaufort, 2,300-metre race, Canberra legend, horse that uh, Walty put the pen through last start and went, now got beat anyway, $4.20. It's favourite here, Numerian 550 for Annabelle. Uh, she's using Hippo, which is good to see. Uh, Skylab 550, Stroker Lux, $7.00, Stockman 750, Use Spirit 13, uh, Torrens 15, and starts to get a pretty uh, long tail of, I'd say, slow horses. Uh, the replay we're going to have a look at here first and only is the Skylab and Lots of pain Stockman here. race. So, yeah, Skylab's way at the back in the yellow. And it's the, basically had a barrier. So they absolutely walk, took off. You, the Stockman's in the middle there in the private eye colours coming through, not suited by a sort of stop start. And he did did, did rode it pretty well, like took off when he needed to. Never co compromise coming through the middle, taking my life with it. So and shock him Skylab. Over? What's that? Shock him over. Is, is that shock him over out wide? The yeah, shock horse? him over. And it was a good effort from where it was. Uh, obviously got a good sprint on it though, which, Just a which line Stockman and too. those horses don't have. Uh, Canberra Legend set outside the leader there. It might have been out sprinted, but just the class um, sits in Stockman and Skylab for me. Uh, clip it and off Nash on Stockman. Um, that's hard to, it's you know, you couldn't draw a bow long enough to say how big an improvement that is. Uh, Skylab certainly looks like this is its target, you would imagine. Just given that ride, it looked like they had other things in mind. If, if the rain arrives, this horse jumps out of the ground as well. And draws ideally with Collett. They just look completely the class. New Mirror in 62 with the rain, if the rain comes, makes it a little bit tougher. I thought it sort of was only okay first and second up too. And yeah, I just keep coming back to them. Stroke of Luck certainly had its chance there in comparison to those two. Canberra Legend really does need to improve. So what well, they're both around the $7 mark. And I think that's more than fair, uh, sort of backing them both equally. I'll tell you what. It's been some sort of prep, this Skylab. First up, it's got beaten 2.8 to Bonus Notches, Argentia and Dragonstone in the show county. And it's had Reggie that day. Then it's had yeah, Kathy. that's probably Kathy, the most interesting thing, yeah. Kathy running into like just fine, Montefilia. And then you just saw Collett there that still was under double wraps and just didn't get a crack at him late. It's absolutely puke material. If there's a horse knocking the door down that wants the, uh, the heavens to open, this is it. Just has to be Saturday or never. Yeah, and home meeting. I just it's got a good feel to it, the whole thing, hasn't it? These uh yeah, and, and the thing about like Kathy and that they're not back market passive horses is not their go. She she suits horses that sort of get up on speed and so does Reggie. So um yeah, it's it's a big positive when when the, the seniors go on that that suit these horses sort of like Nash and, and Collett. I don't think Nash has ever ridden Stockman. I can't wait to see what he can do to this horse because he does need a bit of a liven up and and Nash certainly is capable of that. Mm. 
Uh, Collett, I think Collett could be my imagination, <clears throat> but uh, I think Collett's a really good rider in the wet. Would you agree with that? Well, when the fence is all right and everyone's getting <laughs> off it, he is because he's the only one who ever sticks straight to it. He's um, oh, he's, he's brilliant when he's brilliant. He's a nightmare when he's not. He's um, he's probably the best worst jockey in Australia. The worst best jockey. <laughs> How do you want to put it? He's got as much ability as any jockey in Australia. Sometimes he just looks like he has a few brain fades, but he's uh, he's incredible. Well, I hope we've clarified that for everyone listening at home. Newcastle race eight is the Hunter, and it's a 1,300-metre race here, and Marzu is equal favourite here with far too easy. Uh, Cold Crusher is $6, IME me $6.50, King of Sparta $8, Opal Ridge $10, uh, Darjean $14, and you got much, much better, $17, $21 for Rustic Steel, Gravina, Military Expert, and that'll about do it. Uh, the replay we're going to have a look at here. The first one is Marzu and Cold Crusher in the Giga Kick. Cold Crusher's out in front. Marzu uh, wide and sort of getting hunted along. Yeah, pretty controlled tempo like all the Sydney sprints. They're not very competitive and um, certainly didn't suit the horses back in the pack. Very clumpy finish. You saw Bella Nipatina led this race early, then took a sit and then gets smashed and still runs away from him. Obviously, that form's good. She went down and was a huge again. She's probably the... Far out. She, you've got to say she's number two to Imperatriz if, if if you're being serious, I think, in the sprinters in, in Australia, but that's a bit of an off topic. Um, yeah, I don't know what you'd do with, with Marzu. Um, if he's back to his best, he probably – rain would certainly mm. certainly help his cause. Nash on us again looks a positive. There's no depth to this field. Uh, there looks like there should be good pressure, so it, it should suit – Marzu, if the real Marzu shows up, and Cold Crush is it's all about. I don't think inside draw is ideal for him. If the rain arrives, I don't. Even though he's got good wet track form, it's very hard to sort of lead and win on the inside there at Newcastle. So pressure, you know, it could get ugly for him. Even though you know if things go his way, he he could certainly uh, be very hard to stop here. But uh, I think he needs a little bit more to go his way. So that race is. There's a few angles to it. Mm, far too easy, an interesting one. I thought it was a great run behind front page in the Kosciuszko and then just looks completely set up here. Barrier one, though. Yeah, he, well, his, his run, you can probably draw a line with that I've been trying, which come out and won quite impressively against the Pat Nitz next start. You would say far too easy was a better run than it in the Kosciuszko. Uh, underrated horse. Yeah, gate one, again, you've got Collett. You say he does, he does ride these tracks well and he rides inside draws aggressively so like you know if he if he gets it right this horse will be be certainly strong at the end of a, a 1300 around here track conditions don't matter to it really it's um it's just a tough bomb proof sort of horse that just keeps finding the line so he i can't knock him they did bet big odds i think he's he's quite short now isn't he i think he's been well found hmm Couple of trimmed up there. Mm. Uh, the other horse we're going to have a look at in a replay here is Cinewan. So it's a new addition uh, to the Joe Pride stable. Uh, it's in the uh, Aqua Colors sort of force flush. Second wide. from the outside, yeah. he's about to get the um, the old Chinese squeeze here, the old finger trap. Boom, bang, bang, and just keep watching him because I think the most important part about this is uh, this was first up over you know too short. I think it was eleven hundred, and he basically gives up on him, and then watch him sort of through the line. He starts to um, pick up and go back past a horse like Rocketing By. So, yeah, it shows this race <laughs> how tough it is, I think. Uh, Joe Pride, exceptional with getting these sorts of horses. 15 gate, 35, 53 and a half. I just, it's just a shot in the dark. I think it's 50 or 60 to 1. Um, it was 60 to 1 there. Drops 7 kilos and, and gets up to a more suitable distance. Just a little bit smelly, and it's just a race where if they go absolutely nuts, I think it's it's wide open, and and a horse like this could. It's probably one of the horses that doesn't, looking at its form, um, doesn't want heavy heavy rain, but you know sting out won't be a problem, and and certainly opens up the race a bit more. The other thing you've got to worry about a little bit is seven hundred and twenty days since its last win, but I thought it was airborne leading into last prep, and you just didn't quite see the best of it, and then just saw enough there to say that this horse may be alive and certainly goes around a winner at 50 or 60 to 1 in, in what looks a pretty tough race to me. Mm, geez, I've, I've found him a few times. Nico, you'd be familiar with this horse. Yeah, I backed him in a CF4, I reckon, back probably last year or two years ago. And yeah, he, I think he was going to the Stradbroke last campaign. He didn't get in, or but the lead-up run was very good where he hit the line strongly in Queensland. So yeah, he wouldn't shock, but it does look like Mizzou holds a few of the, few of the aces there with the wet track, Nash, um, coming out of the good form and 
he hasn't had much go right this campaign. The Everest was a bit of a non-event, and then last start just bias against really against you know some of our best. So the weight's probably the big knock there on the wet if it's if it is real wet. But um, he definitely deserves to carry it. Uh, and yeah, like what price would think about it, Bellini Patino, for Private IB in this race? Yeah, they'd be very short. Mm. I thought uh, I thought Cold Crusher could uh, could go really close there. I snipped a little bit of the nine dollars earlier. I thought that was maybe a, a bit of a spoil and. I think he can. He might just keep kicking along. I think it looks looks like a great setup for him. But um, he's gone too slow on him uh, so far this prep, and you would assume you'd assume this is a target race for him. Obviously, I doubt that they were expecting to win the races it's been in previous. So I, yeah, I definitely can't knock it. He just you know at nine bucks and he needs a couple of things to go his way. You're happy to take that risk, aren't you? Yeah, Zachary. All right. If you want more of uh, Johnny's stuff, it's racingwatch.com.au and then you can jump in the uh, the Discord if you want the chat or just Telegram only as we all are doing. We're just going to keep on punning. We don't stop here because the carnival's finished. We bet and we bet. and sleep and then we bet again. So uh, Where that's is what... we bet, bet, bet? Where's he today? Just keep betting. Yeah. Just keep betting. He's, he's in the paddock. He's in the paddock. Yeah, he's a busy yeah. man. All right, drum roll. It's time for Scooty's Moral, our favourite segment here of the week. Here we go. Map? Map? Is that the map? The map? It's still going all right. It uh, went super, didn't it? But uh, we're going to head to Caulfield. I could have gone for Poison Chalice, but I think it's just far too obvious at the eve of money. But I think they'll bet it'll probably finish around $1.50. 1800 is just perfect for uh, Prushka. Uh, I don't know who's – I can't – I can't. I think they've got Callan Murray, actually. They've got Callan Murray, and it might have an inside draw. So, Mate, stop hedging your scooties morals. Just get on to – put your balls on the line. Where well, is it? this is what I'm going to do. Race so, four. Caulfield race four, 1,200-meter uh, race. Saltaire is 390 to 340, commemorative 340. Miravel Rose, 550 to Sonic Boom, $12. Material Dreams, $12. Here comes a star, 17 uh, Love a Zoo, 18. Divine Glory, 21. And then 21, Miss Rumbini. Horse I like here is Saltaire, and it's got the Mumbai Muse form. So it's in the green, closest to the inside uh, fence. But what you missed at the start of the race, speaking of Chinese finger trap, this horse nearly got knocked over. And then uh, you got Nico's uh, tip from the yard, Mumbai Muse, sailing down the outside in the better going. And it was a complete and utter miracle that this horse got so close and I think it was just a moral beat in this day. And this horse, once you dig deeper through its form, it's got serious talent. And Barrier 11 is a bit of a uh, obstacle for Blake Shin, but I think she's got a bit of a class edge on uh, on her rivals here. Go back and watch the full replay of this one, and I think you'll be definitely a believer. 4.20 into uh, a bit 420 early. I've sort of missed the price there, uh, hoping that they might take it on with a wide draw, but uh, top sport have gone 390 into 340. So a bit scary, and I think it just could be one-way traffic. Commemorative, uh, they've had it at last start. Not sure that they found anything. Thing. Um, I think it's a better move, 1,400 back to 1,200, but I think she's just overhyped. I think Miraval Rose, uh, one of Beggy's horses, I think it's got some ability. Uh, Miss Rumbini's got some ability, but this might be just a, uh, a bridge too far. But um, you boys have uh, got a fair handle on a couple of these fillies. Any thoughts? What did Nico think of commemorative first? I'd like to. Down up back in her out of the yard, and she didn't do much, did she? So um, if she ran up to her first number that she put down, she could go on close. In that race, but she hasn't really got near that her last two. So I thought she was pretty disappointing the other day. They've been freshened up uh, just the the blue jackets off a bit of a iffy run. I've been a bit plain recently. So um, they've been hard to catch for the carnival, that's for sure. That um, Saltair, because he used to race in Sydney, it, Dead Set looked like a 900 meter down a well horse. And I don't know what's happened to it, but um, obviously at Mooney Valley, he got held up and come out and sprouted. And you're like, oh, maybe that was a bit flattered. But geez, like that sprint that it squirted there like it's um yeah the key to it's probably a, a, a masterful ride from Sheen. i reckon they will take it on i think you know it just just late because of that gate if but if he gets it right like if he gives it the old curve volant ride you, you're going to be very happy with yourself aren't you like if it slots in somewhere just behind the speed mm. it's going to be hard to beat yeah miravel rose i thought it's got some um yeah definite uh ability and then yeah the thing that zara's on miss rumbini uh has got ability and then love a zoo. It's it was a great run down at uh, Geelong, but they've scratched it from a couple of really suitable races, and I'm just sort of scratching my head at, at what they're doing there. So yeah, if it comes out and um, knocks me off at eighteen dollars, I'll be pretty sick as well because it's just the Murphy Murphy's law. Any thoughts about any of these fillies, DK? If you like the race ones here, uh, no, I didn't get that far, Scooty. 
I'm going to stack a races so I can get this far. I uh, I think it's a safe way to go. So uh, barrier 11, we'll put in the uh, the top two special this week and hopefully uh, the barrier doesn't get it beat. Puntingform.com.au is the form guide that I use. So if you want to uh, transition and take your betting more seriously, mate, it cuts. It, it helps me cut down so much time with uh, pre and post race. I can get through form in a flash. So uh, make sure you get a punting form account. It's uh, definitely the best guide, form guide on the planet. Nico, uh, Launceston Friday night. So we've got a sneaky little Mooney Valley Friday night and the Launceston card marries up nicely with it. We're going to have a look at a couple of uh, races thanks to uh, Taz Racing. The first one is uh, race number two. It's the Kubota Agricultural Maiden Plate over 1,200 metres. Always wanted a Kubota when I was a kid. Lordosis is the horse that we're going to have a look at here. It's sort of buried back on the fence. It's got the pale blue cap with the uh the cross third last there yeah probably should have won um just had nowhere to go in the corner gets a big jockey change gets perez on which this horse used to be trained by brunt and now john keys but it's i don't know seemingly like a very similar setup they're all trained out of the same place so um this was a huge run the winner's bow bun who c- come out run second after this and uh, seemingly grown a leg in a, in a better stable so I just thought he wasn't given much chance there. He's really held up for the two. Last 200, he was, I think, fourth quickest of the meeting, which is pretty good for Maiden Grade and Tassie. And he just, he's always been a horse to show a fair bit of talent. He debuted on, I think it was Hobart Cup Day, and he absolutely flew home in a really strong Maiden. And then his form's been a bit hit and miss since, but I think he's set to peak second up. Perez on just seems absolute go time for him, and he could settle a bit closer in the run from the barrier. So, but if you got probably, uh, there's a few other horses in the race which would take a bit of percentage, like out away. Um, the uh, the horse from the cools on probably take up a bit of percentage as well. So I'd be hopeful for sort of maybe war dollars, but I'd probably be happy to take anything over sort of two fifty, two seventy. Um, that's probably about where I'd mark him, probably two seventy. So I've they let us on a bit early, but I think he'll definitely start favourite in the end. He did a huge job there. He had to severely uh, turn left there and then just sort of accelerated. Did everything that I like to see in a horse. I, th- I think it's a uh, great find there, Nico. I'm, I'm sort Hopefully. of it up. Yeah, C- can't wait for the markets to uh, open up there. The next race we're going to have a look at is race five. It's the Tasmac handicap over fourteen hundred meters, and Sharma's last is a horse you like here, Nico, with the yellow and uh, red cap outside leader. This is a good horse, this guy. Um, his poor mass campaign he was sort of in some of Tasmania's best races as a three-year-old behind Ballo Bo and a few other nice horses. That he always get way too far back in his races. He's been able to put himself up on top of the speed in a few of these. Recent runs he had over the winter at um, Devonport. He was quickest closing sexuals in nearly all of his races. And he still does a fair bit wrong, but just the way he wins, um, his unbeaten last campaign. He sort of did a trial terrific, but he did that going into last prep as well. Gravy up bit first up and then he won easily. So just don't think it's as that relevant with this horse. Um, so yeah, Trinder's a really good trainer. He's got a great record at Launceston and you sort of look at this race and you think, oh, this this horse might be a bit up in class from what it's racing at recently, but the sort of required figure to win the race, he ran last start. So he's just a horse on the up, and I think he's probably going to be a horse that will do a fair bit of damage over the, the Tassie summer and could find himself in potentially some of those wait for age races if he keeps um, sort of elevating his figures, which he did last campaign. He just kept improving. So he's first up, but um, he only raced back in August and just the way Trinder trains and that the heavy sand and that they can keep him pretty fit without racing him. So um, I just think he might be the best horse in that race and it may be another opportunity where you can probably back him where the market's a little bit against him because um, if he wins, they'll be all over him sort of the rest of the campaign. So probably trying to get ahead of the curve a bit there, but um, he looks a really smart horse, Sharma's last. And he's probably one of the horses I think you could follow throughout the Tasmanian part of He just looks like he's uh, going to be right in most races he runs. He's got a big turn of foot and um, he's starting to really learn what the game's all about. So. Yeah, talented horse, Sharma's Lars. Mm. And he's uh, just a little quiet barrier trial there with Turt, Warrior, Swoop, Dog, and First Accused. So Trinder's obviously put him in the uh, the hot trial there as well. Yeah, he just poked around out the back, didn't do much. So that no, wasn't wasn't two worrying signs there. I just think he was there for a bit of a look around. What about the rider? Erica, <laughs> Erica Byrne Burke. I thought she was a famous actress. She, she, she rode the horse there and... She's been a bit of Trinder's go-to recently, maybe because she does claim, which is probably big in a few of those races where, you know, a lot of the horses are a similar level of talent, but um, she's she's been the one that's really sort of been punching home the winners, not but cool. So she does go all right. Her stats are all right. Um, she doesn't look the greatest on them, but she gets the job done. So 
hopefully she does the same here and um the connections of she knows the horse so that's probably the big tick um she's rode him recently so yeah she's she's probably one on the up in tasmania a bit she she gets good rides but she does get the job done more often than not mm, outridden a claim too so maybe they'll poach her up to sydney there's a couple of jockeys Mate, that, hey leave me alone it's a bit shallow the of Sid, sydney riding noise. ranks Mate. Mate, you start talking about jockeys. Mate. Your backyard's pretty ordinary. That's what I'm saying. I don't need any more. <laughs> I don't need any more of this. No. Oh, she's mate, she's good. I look at her punting form. She looks looks good. Erica. No. Even J-Max run away to Hong Kong for a month. She's 12 of the last 50, 24%. I don't know why. Jesus. Flat seeking. That's crazy, isn't it? Erica Byrne Burke put her in the uh, black book as well. Trinda knows. Gay will probably hear us, and next thing you know, she'll be up there. <laughs> she's got McChicken, mate. She doesn't need anyone else. She's got she's got McChicken. Anna Roper. Yeah, there's a couple of real beauties. All right. That's, oh, there's uh, actually, there was an interesting one. The girl, the girl from NT, which no, actually Nico's the only one on earth who's probably got a chance of hearing of her. She's, uh, I think, a mum and dad are trainers. She's just kicked off with Bjorn, I think, and she's two from two, I think, in the country, maybe two from three. Who is she it? She looks interesting. She's ridden like 20% winners up there. Like, oh. Can't remember the name off the top of my head, but her mum and dad are trainers in Hallett Springs. She's you know, claiming three, I think, or two in the country, which is enough, and looked pretty strong on a couple of his. So she, she's actually interesting. Outstanding. Hmm. Form Plus Pro is uh, how you can do your Tassie form. They got uh, It's free to sign up, and then you get uh, access to all the replays of Black Book. It's um, so pure, the video quality. So it's like the pure water of Tasmania, and the quality of the replays is unbelievable compared to someone like Let's say Racing New South Wales, whose website is, you know, looks sort of, sort of something from the early 90s and um, the quality of doing the replays out of New South Wales is just pitiful. So if you want to do your races a little bit cleaner, Tassie's definitely the place to be because uh, the quality of the vision there is just outstanding. We spoke about it before. They use great cameras, even at uh, the trials and the uh, the jump outs and those sort of things. Dakota Lee Gillette. Maybe it's all in the three names. Dakota Lee Gillette. She's the... Uh the new new edition of Bjorn's. Um, mate, if, everyone, by the time we start watching replays, whether it's four in the morning or eight o'clock at night, we, we're not seeing straight anyway. So the, the quality of them doesn't really matter. We're fuzzy anyway. I can't believe how bad they are in New South Wales. I don't understand why they're not HD. It doesn't make any sense. But, um, you know, $3 million race on Saturday, they can't afford HD uh, storage. Okay, I found this on the web for HD. <laughs> Shut up, Siri. <laughs> I told you, they're listening, mate. They're listening. Everyone's always listening. How's Van Gessel going? Well, it's bugged. I don't know. I, don't know. I see Abdullah's ridden a few winners over there in Unum's, I think, four or five Van winners. Van Gessel chasing Harry you. Bentley, wasn't he? Yeah. Was he? Yeah, <laughs> give him a fair whack, didn't they? Oh, anyway, God. it's another story for another day. Yep. It's time for Donnie's Best. G'day, boys. Metro Racing is the sunny coast this weekend. I found a really nice each-way bet. It comes up in race five. It's called Horseside Martini. It's run two back at this tracking trip. Has to be seen to be believed that it went like a lead jet, smashing by about seven lengths. So back in distance, back to Durban last start, hit the line well. Back to the sunny coast, 1,800 for the soft draw. It should sit back in the field, but I think it'll be closing all over the top of them. Can't believe it's $12. I think it should be much shorter and likely starts much shorter, so I'm having a really big each way bet on that. I think there's a moral in race one, the first starter for Golan Barbie's sister. He looks like a really good horse. Wouldn't be surprised if it's um, in the Magic Millions in January. Good luck, gents. Too good. He's got the chest pumped. He's uh, full of confidence there, and he's knocked the price off uh, Hall Sard Martini, which is nice of him. $12 into nine in race five of Sunshine Coast, and there's a massive spruik around um, Barbie's. So it's out back Barbie's sister. Yeah, Barbie's yeah. sister. Race one, number six, Sorry, Angela trial. Jones. Barry yeah, nine. It's 70. Yeah, so I think it's, uh, what is it, Malibu? Well, if you take the double, the two of them, you get the price you got to win the other one. Yeah. That's not bad. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Until the first leg goes, bop. <laughs> uh, race eight is the Tab Malibu Cup. Knight's Choice goes up there, and it's been off the map, 550 yeah. into 320. Yeah. What's going on there? Oh, well, it's back to the scene of the crime, isn't it, where, is it's, it? Um, where, it, where it goes like an absolute rocket. And I heard him get off the other day and said it's um, back in business, so I, I haven't. Had a close look at how it went there all this race, but yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if it went back to its former glory and ran through the brick walls again because they, they, their horses seem to do that up there. That camp, geez, they 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 find a leg up um, when they're in their home territory. Mm. You can just see that uh, the Queensland Carnival is just starting to heat up too. That Sunshine Coast 
card looks uh, pretty delicious, I would have thought. So given we're a Queensland racing show and a Tasmanian Queensland racing show. Queensland Carnival? What's what's the Carnival? That's been all through the press up here, the Koori Mail and that. What race are they? What, what's in the Carnival? Well, it's full steam ahead now until the Magic until, Millions. Oh, Magic Millions. Sorry. Yeah, okay, so fair like they've, they've done all this big race series. Well, they, it's, the track opens this week. Is it next week? Goldie. Did they just say? It's Goldie soon. Sa- this Saturday or the Saturday after? Soon. Yeah. Yeah, new grass, I think they've galloped lights, on it. Everything. I saw yeah, they had a few horses gallop over it, which Should is we a good go? sign. Uh, well, they are going. Normally, they have a heart attack and send one around it, but if they're sending five or six, that's a good sign that they think it's going to hold together. So it must be in good shape, man. If you can't grow grass here, yeah, uh, considering the weather we've had this year, oh my goodness! It has but been you, a bit you never say. You, know, you always fingers crossed when it comes to these new tracks. Yeah, no, nah, it should be fine. It's going to bucket down next week. So knowing uh, the way they treat that track, though, they'll probably run thirty-four meetings on it in the next eight weeks, and it'll be goody cactus, cactus. by the time it comes. But hopefully, they look after it at least until the magic millions. That is a bit of a worry if they uh, just smash it out too early. But uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll uh, get it under control because mm. they've got the bloke from Sydney, Navesh. Oh, they've got they've got uh, Mitchy Mitchy in the in the box up there. That's the main. He's looking over him all the time and giving him advice. He's good at giving advice from up above. He's, so, uh, that's the future. Up here, DK, it's uh, it's just the a lights. matter of time, mate. When were the lights going yep. on? When DK gets here. Oh. When DK moves. No, when, when DK comes, in. comes in, the lights go off. Every Friday night. <laughs> 67, uh, 7, 8, 19 years I'll be there. Retirement. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, DK. It's going to give you 19 years to learn how to play golf. This week, uh, our top two special at Top Sport is race four, number two, Saltaire. Come on, Blake. And Corfed race seven, number three, Skybird. So $6, $50 max bet per customer, top two. So both finish top two, $50 max bet, uh, $6 your dividend there. So a uh, lot of weight on my shoulders by the sound of it. And uh, Blake's from Barrier 11. But I think there are two cracking bets. And there's no Jamie Spencer, so we should be pretty sweet. Last week, Top Sports Steam were all over Monty Outlander, thirteen dollars into four eighty. Mister Waddick, yeah, a bit unlucky, but the winner was um, very strong, pretty good, very yeah. strong. The dramatist second horse would have been very handy. Still, well, it's still it's, it saved me the winner, so who cares about what happened to you? Well, yeah. race three, Newcastle is the first bet here. Number one, I'm a true star, two hundred and fifty dollars at twenty one. Talk to me about race. Uh, yeah, it's it's an impossible race, and this horse is, is ready to win a race. So, um, yeah, that's a big price for a horse that's now well, well set up for the first time. I don't know if it'll run the trip. That's the only concern, but um, $21, not knocking it. Mm. Yeah, it is a deep race. And the other one's in the same race, uh, 250 on like a model at $16. Yeah, I think it does run the trip. I haven't looked at it closely. I, thought, I think it might be an emergency, but, um, yeah, again, it's just a – so, Nothing can really win. I think the favourite's quite short. Is it rematch from a horrible mm. draw with pretty average form? It's, That's your starting point. Pen it. Well, it's a bit weird because uh, like that Masara camp, they absolutely fly until they get to highway. So they've got a horrible record in this race, and I hate statistics like that, which are you know irrelevant when it comes to horse to horse. But for whatever reason, they they don't seem to perform as well when they get here, and it's, it seems to be something that's true. So uh, wide draw, very short odds. Nash is going to have to be at his best to justify those ones. Mm, 1600 on a wet track. Mm, shaky. You're at the price. for this wet, aren't you? Like you're just hoping that <laughs> 200 mils show up, not 20. That's all right. Just just have more on. All right, the last bet here is race seven, number three, Skybird, 800 at uh, $3.70 at Top Sport. So it's drifted, $3.70 out to $4, but uh, there's a lot of uh, love for it on the show and obviously that bet as well. So... Plenty of action for a skybird. So we're all going to go down with the ship together, which will be beautiful. So over to you, Bo Mertens. DK, uh, my man Aaron Carew uh, got the chocolates, tolerance, $2 into $1.50, easy as you like. Got a couple of little trumpets on Twitter. A couple yes, of people yes, said, yes, oh, mate, easy as you like. Did you watch the race? It was a, uh, yeah, as easy as I like. It was a, as I think Marco said, it was a full high weight spectacle. We got the whole shoot match. They were knocking each other over early. And Lucky Kuru was sort of out in trouble there. I thought, that's all right. He's avoiding that. And then he got planned at the trip. But um, hit the front I, at like the 700 or something. <laughs> like he, it was crazy. It was an enormous <laughs> swing. It's never yeah, easy, no, is it's, it? Um, it's not easy. Not easy. So, especially when, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, edge of the seat stuff. Till the last 50 metres, which is not ideal in a 2200 metre race, but uh, it got there. So, uh, similar, similar. See, I played straight back there, knew the horse from the last start, straight back there. So, I'm going to, 
the maidens on Friday have uh, got for some very dangerous first starters in there, and you don't know whether you're on with them until the last five minutes of betting. So I won't stream. So we'll play straight bat DK. Don't worry about straight bat Bowman. Straight bat from the Wolf Den. It's, we'll play straight bat DK. We'll go to the horse who won for us the other day. Ain't no deal done. Uh, I think he's in the first at uh, Caulfield. He's uh, Dunkel. Dunkel's going to have to be on his a, absolute A-plus game to beat him first up. So he's a horse in the zone. Get Sarah. Um, he's the fit horse. He'll have a net map edge on it. I don't mind him coming back to 1800 the way he won at 1800 at Sandown the start before. It might be, you know, might be the right trip for him. He savaged the line there. It was a good win the other day versus the bias. Like, he had to get going on him early, do a few things he wouldn't have done if it wasn't for that savage bias. And he still stuck his head out of one. God bless him. So we're playing with the money we won off him last start. So um, I think, uh, yeah, like Friday, anchor your multis for the weekend and kick off your day. Uh, ain't no deal done. Mm, small field. Zara, Zara. Too. Is that the race Zara. done deals again? Sorry, you're half tuned out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need to do Dunkel. Dunkel, sorry, Dunkel, yeah. 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 Ma- yeah. Small field. Small field, Mark Zara, core field, under eight runners, massive bonus. Well, Dunkel, bonus. Fast run. I deal with a fast run race, you know. Boner. Boners. <laughs> Stroke of luck. We got through it, but then we've just dropped the boner in there. We'll get a boner over there. Steak has already got a boner. He's knocked it off 180 into $1.65. So. Oh, is it? I didn't know. I thought it was a dollar. Knocked it off. Thought, knocked it off. Anyway, nah, that, use, you get a dollar ready. Use your boosts. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be right. Boost it up. Boost it up, multi it up. Just Boost it up. Bet365, get the uh, SP guarantee, and then send in six years of your life's work to so you get paid. <laughs> well, that's and a good thing. About- every bet you've had with all the other bookies. <laughs> exactly. And that's that's the good thing about Top Sport. At least they'll, they don't make you do all that sort of who are. And they, you, top sports one of the only places I still get a, like a little top up and boost, a little tickle. I wouldn't it's nice know because I've never hit the click button, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Go away. Go away. All right, I think that's the uh, the end of the show. We haven't killed Nico in the spring carnival. He's going to put the mouth guard in, and he's uh, back. So good luck, Nico. Uh, can't wait for uh, the Launceston uh, carnival just to all roll through. So we found some uh, good bets for Friday night. Got a couple of shorties, and I oh, just thinking of the, uh, the poor old Sean Byrne trying to do Jakey a, a good turn at combat where he came with the eye. Just put eleven oh, that was funny. through that was trumpet of the week, and, the, and yours is the fastest. Oh, when I read it, I was like, oh, this is not gonna, this is not gonna end well. And I and I do believe it was with all good intentions. It was. Have you, <laughs> have, you have you found the, have you found the Munners Luke Cray thread from the last twenty four hours? Have you? Oh, any chance? oh Jesus! Oh, He's a better a better bet this week. Than and Skybird and anything that we've mentioned on the show is the mute button on Twitter. And the best thing is, once they start trolling you, you don't see it, and they and they think they're still talking to you and they can't see it. I think so I've just followed twelve hundred people. Don't give them the satisfaction of block. Just hit mute, and it's it's not an issue. I follow twelve hundred, and I've got seven hundred muted. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad effort. Good yeah. ratio. They just end up talking to themselves like that other bloke. Yeah, that other bloke that's blocked everyone. <laughs> Don't like know and share. What is it? Yeah, share. Share your opinions. Share your love. But what, yeah, what's where, the where's Horse Miller gone? Oh, mate, don't end the show with him, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my we'll God. See, we'll see you next week.